All right, let's dive right into this week's deep dive. Southern California's Observer Group Newspapers, week of October 23rd, 2024. Are you ready? Always. And with election week looming, it's a packed one. Oh, yeah. VP Harris, Dodgers in the World Series, the Taste of Soul Festival. California politics are heating up and, whoa, a proposition to remove the same-sex marriage ban from the state constitution. Feels like we're hitting all the major points here. It's a real cross-section of what's going on. Local news, political analysis, even cultural events. Love it. Okay, so VP Harris first. This new agenda she's put forward, especially after Obama's... Uh, comments. Yeah, those definitely stirred the pot. Elections a week away, and he suggests black men might hesitate to vote for a woman president. Hmm. Not the most tactful timing, maybe. He got a lot of criticism for that. People saw it as playing into stereotypes, not getting the complexity of black voters and the Democrats. So Harris comes out with his detailed plan, and it does feel like a direct response, right? Mm -hmm. Especially the focus on economics. Definitely tackles that racial wealth gap head on. The forgivable loan program for black entrepreneurs is a big one. $20,000. Wow. Acknowledging the history there, the lack of access to capital. But is that enough to really close the gap? That's the million dollar question for sure. Some say it's a band-aid solution, doesn't address the root causes like lending discrimination, generational wealth. Others say, hey, it's an immediate boost. Black owned businesses need that now. It's a tough one. Definitely gets people talking. And she's not stopping at loans. Jobs? Education, too, right? Mm. Ditching the college degree requirement for a bunch of federal jobs? Bold move. Opens doors for folks who didn't go the traditional route. But then, does it devalue those jobs? Or is it just recognizing skills learned outside academia? Another big debate. Makes you rethink the whole system. Then there's the health equity focus, capping insulin costs, more research into sickle cell. Mm. What are the biggest health challenges for black men that she's trying to address? We're talking significantly higher rates of chronic diseases, heart disease, stroke, diabetes. This plan's about increasing access to affordable meds, investing in research for conditions disproportionately affecting black men. And it's not just playing catch up. This cryptocurrency protection thing, that's future focused. Like she's saying black men are part of the future of finance. Totally. Acknowledging the digital economy's growing importance and such a contrast to Trump's Project 2025, which critics say could set back criminal justice reform, other progress made. Really highlights the different visions these candidates have. Okay, enough politics for now. Let's lighten the mood Dodgers are World Series bound. And against the Yankees. Oh man, that's a matchup for the ages. Even people who don't follow baseball get into this rivalry. It's been decades since they faced off in the World Series, like back in 81. This is going to be huge. And think about their season, the whole interpreter scandal, Otani's gambling issues, all those pitching injuries. They fought hard to get here. Definitely resilient. Manager Dave Roberts has built this player-driven team, and you saw it in the bye week. Yeah, and they, instead of drills, they focused on bonding. What's the strategy there? Is this a new trend in baseball? It's different, that's for sure. Shifting from practice, practice, practice to building trust, camaraderie, believing a united team performs better under pressure. Risky, but it seems to work for them. And the star power. Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman against the Yankees, Judge and Cole. It's a lineup of heavy hitters. Clash of styles, too. Dodgers, offense is their thing, versus Yankees pitching and defense. How's that going to play out on the field? Intriguing. From baseball drama to, well, something completely different. The Taste of Soul Family Festival. A true L.A. institution now. Hundreds of thousands on Crenshaw Boulevard. Celebrating black culture, the food, the music, the community. Lineup is unreal. KJLH Gospel Choir, Lena Bird Miles, Brent Jones and the Best Life Choir, Andra Day, James Wright Chanel, Soul, Gospel, R&B, all the big names. And the article really brings out the festival's energy. It's about people coming together, celebrating their heritage, supporting local businesses. These events are so vital for community, showing how rich Black culture is. It sounds like a fantastic experience. All right, we've had politics, sports, culture. Now down to the nitty gritty. California political news. Things are heating up with the election coming. Absolutely. Observable Group's got us covered on some key issues facing California. Gas prices, for one. The state's getting serious about those crazy price spikes we've all dealt with. Right. Trying to keep things stable. This new law gives them more control over refineries, trying to keep the fuel supply steady. Lots of debate, though. Some say it's necessary to protect consumers. Others worry it'll backfire, leading to higher prices or even safety issues at the refineries. A delicate balance they're trying to strike. Yeah. And speaking of balances, that story about healthcare worker wages, California's raising the minimum wage for them big time. $25 an hour. 
by 2033, yeah. Huge win for healthcare workers. They've been fighting for fair pay, especially after the pandemic. $25 is significant, particularly for entry-level positions. Yeah. What kind of impact will that have on the healthcare system overall? The goal is attracting and keeping qualified people, right? Better staff, better care. But will it drive up health care costs for everyone? Could smaller hospitals and clinics even handle it? Big questions as this rolls out. Definitely complex. And then there's this interagency equity advisory committee looking for applicants. What do they do? They're crucial in shaping California's transportation policy. Everything from building new highways to public transit, the focus, equity, making sure transportation benefits everyone, not just a select few. So it's about making sure nobody's left behind, regardless of income, race, where they live when it comes to transportation. Exactly. How does transportation impact jobs, health care, education, all those things that make life good? And in a state as diverse as California, that's really important. Great example of policy trying to make things fair. And last but not least, elections a week away and the Secretary of State's pushing hard for early voting. Every vote counts, right. They're making it easy. Vote by mail, early in person, or, of course, on Election Day. Get out there and participate. All right, we covered a lot. Anything in this first batch that surprised you or stood out? I think the contrast between Harris's approach to economic empowerment for black men and what critics say about Trump's Project 2025 is really striking, really shows what's on the line in this election. Yeah, very different visions for the future. Mm. OK, so before the break, we were talking about some pretty heavy stuff. Now let's look at this Proposition 3, removing the same-sex marriage ban from the California Constitution. Kind of confusing. Same-sex marriage is already legal. Uh, yeah, you're right. Legal in California since 2013, nationwide since that Obergefell v. Hodges decision in 2015. Why even bother with this? Exactly. Feels like going backwards, especially after all that debate about Roe v. Wade being overturned. So is this about protecting those rights just in case something changes federally? You got it. Overturning Roe v. Wade got people worried about other rights, same-sex marriage included. Prop 3 would solidify things in California, no matter what happens in Washington. So like California saying, we got your back, regardless of federal decisions. Exactly. It's putting that right directly into the state constitution, an extra layer of protection beyond the current federal law. Makes sense. And for the LGBTQ plus community, especially with how big and influential it is in California, this must be huge. It is. For many, it's not just about legally marrying. It's about being seen, relationships treated equally, with dignity, just like any other marriage. Equality, plain and simple. Elections just days away. It'll be interesting to see how Californians vote on this one. Definitely a gauge of where public opinion is. Mm. Solidify those protections or not. It says a lot about California's direction, not just on LGBTQ plus rights, but on equality overall. A lot riding on this vote, for sure. <laughs> okay, back to some other California political news. Observer Group covers health care, education, even transportation. Where should we start? Let's stick with healthcare for a bit. We mentioned those United Health Foundation scholarships, but there's also that story about how much healthcare worker wages are going up in California. Yeah, the $25 minimum wage by 2033. That's, okay. wow, a big deal, right? Absolutely a victory for those who've been pushing for fairer pay in healthcare. What brought this on? Seems like a huge change could really impact the economy, right? The pandemic really showed how crucial healthcare workers are and how little they're being paid for that crucial work. So it's recognizing that, making sure they're paid fairly for such demanding jobs. So respect as much as economics then. I bet that resonates with voters. For sure. The hope is higher wages will attract more talented people, people will stay in their jobs longer, better care for everyone. But there's always another side. What are some worries people have about these higher wages? Biggest one is, will it make healthcare more expensive for everyone? Could hospitals, clinics, especially the smaller ones, afford this? Could it lead to cuts in services? Definitely something to watch as this new law gets put into practice. Trying to balance fair pay with keeping healthcare affordable, it's tough. Super complex. And it speaks to the bigger problems with healthcare, not just in California, but everywhere, really. Okay, on to transportation. That interagency equity advisory committee, we talked about them needing applicants. What kind of projects do they actually advise on? Their work is all over the place, building new highways, expanding them, making public transit easier to use and more affordable. Even looking at how transportation affects things like air pollution and climate change. 
big picture stuff then mm. could really affect people's daily lives. Totally. And that focus on equity, making sure whatever they do benefits all communities fairly, like making sure low income areas have good public transit or reducing traffic in areas that have always had problems with pollution from freeways. So it's about connecting people to jobs, health care, whatever they need, no matter where they live. That's it. Making sure everyone has a fair chance to get to work, school, doctor's appointments, all those things that make life good. Creating a fairer system for everyone. Okay, let's circle back to VP Harris's plan for black men. We touched on it earlier, but it deserves a deeper dive. What stood out to you most? The way she's taking on the racial wealth gap, it's important. And it's not just throwing money at the problem. She's looking at a lot of things. Easier access to capital for black entrepreneurs, more mentorship opportunities, fighting those discriminatory lending practices we talked about. Right, those forgivable loans for black entrepreneurs. That's a big one. Have we seen that kind of thing before? It's bold. And yeah, there have been smaller programs like that, but nothing this big. It recognizes how hard it's been for black entrepreneurs historically and now and tries to make things more fair. Giving them the tools to not just survive, but really build something. And getting rid of that college degree requirement for some federal jobs, that's interesting too. Challenges the idea that you need a degree for a good job, right? Recognizes that people learn valuable skills in lots of ways, not just college. Exactly. And opening up those federal jobs to more people could change the whole economy. Who knows? It's about being inclusive, valuing all kinds of experience. What about our healthcare proposals? We mentioned them, but let's dig deeper. Really important. That focus on health equity for black men capping insulin costs, making that life-saving medication affordable, pushing for more research into sickle cell disease, which mostly affects the black community. Taking on those health disparities directly. Exactly. And not just reacting to problems, but investing in research and preventative care could really change things for future generations. And that proposal about protecting investments in cryptocurrency and digital assets, why is that in there? Making sure black men aren't left out of this new digital economy Cryptocurrency is becoming a bigger deal all the time. Got to make sure everyone has a chance to be part of it. Breaking down barriers, opening up new ways to build wealth and financial security. Exactly. Recognizing that finance is going digital and everyone needs equal access. A bold vision, that's for sure. And so different from Trump's Project 2025, which people say could undo progress on things like civil rights and safety net programs. It really shows the different paths these candidates are on, the choices voters have to make in this election. Okay, let's take a break from the serious stuff. Time to talk Dodgers. Facing off against the Yankees in the World Series. Hasn't happened in over 40 years. The Titans clash. This rivalry goes way back. Even if you don't care about baseball, you can't help but get caught up in this. I know, it's electric. And the Dodgers, what a season. That scandal with the interpreter, the gambling stuff, then all those injuries. They really fought their way here. Super resilient team. And manager Dave Roberts, he's fostered this really unique team culture. Mm -hmm. Trust and player empowerment are key. We talked about how they spent their bye week bonding instead of hardcore practice. Is that becoming more common in pro sports? It's a shift away from the no pain, no gain mentality, that's for sure. Now it's like mental and emotional health are just as important as physical strength and skills. So you're not just building a physically strong team, yeah. but a team that's connected mentally and emotionally. I think that helped them get through those tough times this season. Hard to say for sure, but it probably played a big part. When you face problems as a team, that bond, that trust can really make the difference. And the star power in this series. Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman for the Dodgers, going up against the Yankees, Judge and Cole, a baseball fan's dream. Some of the best players in the game going head to head. And their styles are so different too. The Dodgers, all about that offense. The Yankees, pitching and defense. Classic yeah. battle of strategies. It's going to be an incredible series. Okay, before we go to our last segment, I want to talk about the Taste of Soul Festival again. It's not just music and food. It's, well... It's more than that. Right. It really is. It's a celebration. Black culture, community, resilience. A powerful way to show pride in their heritage and a reminder of all that Black Americans have given to this country. Reading that article, you could feel the joy, the sense of community at the festival. People coming together, celebrating their culture, supporting local businesses. It's inspiring. Those kinds of events are so important for building unity, understanding, a space for people to share their culture, appreciate each other. It reminds us how rich and diverse our society is. A beautiful thing to see, yeah. A reminder to celebrate what makes us different. 
a message of hope and unity. We could all use a little more of that these days. All right, welcome back to The Deep Dive. We've covered a lot of ground here, from politics to the World Series to the Taste of Soul Festival, all through those Observer Group newspapers. It's amazing how those stories give you a real feel for what's happening in Southern California. It's like a snapshot, right? Different voices, different perspectives, but it all fits together. Yeah, exactly. And as we wrap up this deep dive, I'm kind of feeling like we've been on a roller coaster ride. We talked about some really serious stuff like the racial wealth gap and LGBTQ plus rights. But we also had those fun celebratory moments like the Dodgers going to the World Series and how awesome the Taste of Soul Festival was. That's life, isn't it? Ups and downs, challenges and victories, always moving forward, but not always in a straight line. Makes you think about how Southern California is more than just a place. It's alive, it's changing all the time. And the people who live there, their stories, their hopes, their struggles, that's what shapes it. These stories we've talked about, they're just a little peek into that bigger story. Thinking back to that debate about Proposition 3, it really shows how the fight for equality, it's not over. Progress isn't always guaranteed, and sometimes we have to fight to protect the rights we've already won. It shows how powerful it is when people come together and demand change, and it reminds us how important it is to stay informed, to get involved, to vote. Because what happens in politics affects us all, you know? It's not just about voting either. It's about talking to each other, even when it's hard. Challenging our own biases. Working to make things fairer for everyone. Speaking of fairness, VP Harris's plan for black men, that's a really interesting approach to dealing with those systemic inequalities. You know, she's not just thinking about quick sixes, but also those deeper problems that cause the racial wealth gap in the first place. Right. Breaking down those barriers that keep people from getting ahead. Creating opportunities so everyone has a chance to succeed. And it's more than just money, right? It's about health care, education, having access to resources. These things have been unequal for far too long. She's looking at the whole picture. You can't just fix one thing without looking at the others. It's all connected. Economics, health care, education, racism. And it takes all of us to make a difference. The government, communities, each of us doing what we can. And sometimes, with all the serious stuff happening, you need those moments of joy, of celebration, something to lift you up, remind you of the good things. Like the Taste of Soul Festival. Mm. Even with all the challenges, you see the resilience of the black community, their strength, it shines through. That music, the food, the feeling of community, it's a beautiful expression of cultural pride. Yeah. It shows the power of the human spirit. And the Dodgers, the way they built their team, their determination, it's almost like a metaphor, right? Yeah. Even when things are tough, if you work together, believe in yourselves, you can achieve amazing things. Absolutely. Never give up on your dreams. So as we wrap up this deep dive, what do we want our listeners to take away from all of this? I hope they feel connected to these stories, you know, realize that these issues, these victories, these challenges, they're all part of what makes Southern California what it is. And I hope they feel like they can make a difference, that they can be part of the conversation, use their voices do something to improve their communities. Because in the end, the future of Southern California, it's up to all of us. The choices we make, the things we do, the stories we tell, it all matters. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into Southern California. We'll be back next week with more stories, more insights, more conversations that make you think. Until then, stay curious, stay engaged, and keep exploring the world around you.